follow Eastward Boats on a 500 mile Florida adventure. Two anglers traveling 500 miles. From inshore to fresh water, out into the Gulf of Mexico, down to the Everglades, around the Keys, and back up the Atlantic coast. Follow the route tracked in real time by onboard GPS. Meet the captains who helped us plan and ride along as we share the sights we saw and conditions we encountered on our 500 mile trip around the bottom half of Florida. Brought to you by Eastward Boats, Evinrude Outboards, Ray Marine Electronics, Fleer Thermal Imaging, Armstrong, Paramount Chemicals, TH Marine, CNEs, Oceanic Gear, Magic Till Trailers, and these other fine sponsors. Accommodations by Roland and Marianne Martins Marina, Angler House Marina, and Port of the Islands. The third leg of the trip, we're going to start in Fort Myers, and we're going to go out into the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to run the beach in the Gulf all the way down on the west coast of Florida, and we're going to tuck back in uh, uh, a place called Port of the Islands up in the Everglades. Before we get there, we're going to show you something really cool. As we go around Cape Romano, there's these concrete dome houses that were built years ago uh, by some people who wanted to get off the grid back before getting off the grid was cool and a hurricane kind of wiped out their little uh, compound, but uh, it's a really neat place uh, to look at if you've never seen it. And from there, we will go on to Port of the Islands, and that's where we'll stay uh, for the night. All right, we're up here on Coral Point, right? Talking to Captain Stamper last night. He was suggesting we fish from here to basically somewhere up in here, right. I guess this stretch of the river. So where you'll want to come out, once you come out here and you come down here past, past the Cape Coral Bridge, the big bridge, uh, the right. very last bridge you have here. From this point down is where you're going to start thinking about fishing. Now, over here is Palmetto Point, and this is called Deep Cove in here. Mm -hmm. But if you get in the deep lagoon on these side spots right here, where there's no home, you're going to have a lot of flats that come out 50, 60, 70 yards in a lot of cases. But they're going to be too deep. Okay? You're going to have a foot of water plus on the, on the tide already. So you can get in here and roll down the shoreline. So um, yeah, and we'll just we'll just fish along here and just you know. Okay, and then I know Pete will be coming with uh, either with us or shortly behind us, and I think what we'll do, we'll each just hopscotch over each other okay. wherever we are. Yeah. And when we all group up here, then that's when we'll go ahead and make our run, get under the Santa Bell, and start our trek down the west coast. The next morning, before running the balance of the Caloosahatchee River out into the Gulf, we thought we'd do a little fishing right in the very canal that we stayed on the night before. The owner of the house said they'd been catching some snook and tarpon right along the edge of the mangroves early in the morning. In just a few casts, Lee connected with a real nice snook. He was using a medium weight spin outfit and was throwing a DOA 5.5 inch jerk bait in night glow color. It was rigged with just a single hook and no weight. We had a lot of miles to travel today, so we decided to get underway and head out for Port of the Islands. Making a run like this, you're never quite sure what you're going to run into. This turned out to be a floating bait and tackle shop in the Caloosahatchee River. We made it to the mouth of the Caloosahatchee River right before the Sanibel Bridge. Here we stumbled on an abandoned crab trap buoy. Whenever you see one of these, stop just to make sure there's no triple tail hanging out on it. Once you clear the Sanibel Bridge, you enter into the Gulf of Mexico. Our plan today was just to hug the western shore all the way down to Port of the Islands. Once we reached Cape Romano, I wanted to take a quick stop just to show everybody the concrete dome home. For many years, these bizarre buildings on the isolated southern tip of Marco Island were a bit of a mystery. Actually, they were just a holiday home built by retired independent oil producer Bob Lee back in 1980. Unfortunately, Hurricane Wilma rendered them uninhabitable. The run from Cape Romano to Port of the Islands is not that long. And before we knew it, we were weaving our way through the 10,000 islands. 
The channel was very well marked, and with a good GPS, there's no issue navigating your way through the maze of islands. Once you reach the main channel that leads to the resort, you're going to hit a long area of no wake. But that's okay, just sit back, relax, and take in the beautiful scenery. You'll see dolphins and every bird imaginable. Watch out for the manatees, but also you can pick areas that you can come back to to fish later. Just before the resort, both sides of the canal are lined with beautiful private homes. Once you get to the end of the canal, look to the left and you'll see the marina to Port of the Islands. We pulled up to the main dock, checked in at the marina office, and got our slip assignments. As we were tying up the boats, we were greeted by one of the marina residents. After all, we are in the Everglades. But once he realized we weren't returning from a trip with fish to clean, he swam off and paid us no more attention. After a long day on the water and the boat squared away, it was time to check into our rooms. Okay, we're here at Port of the Islands. This is our halfway point in the trip. We've gone a little over, say, 233 miles. Um, our original plan was to continue the whole loop in one continuous trip, but you know what? Mother Nature is just really not cooperating. Uh, the forecast right now sees two to four feet with an occasional five on like four seconds. Uh, that interval in the Gulf, especially this next run, which is 100 miles, just the one leg, and it's around the back side of the Everglades, which puts us a really, really big fetch between the Everglades and the Keys, totally unprotected. Not that we couldn't make that, that run, but uh, it's going to be rough, it's going to be miserable, and we're not going to be able to film any of it. We certainly can't take our camera equipment out in that. We won't be able to fish. So anyway, we decided what we're going to do is we're going to stop here at the halfway point. We're going to trailer the boats back to Port St. Lucie. We're going to wait for a weather window. As soon as we get our weather window, we're going to bring the boats back down here to Port of the Islands, and we're going to continue our trip in part two of this series. Last night, you know, we met with Captain Charlie Phillips, and we really have to defer to his expertise. He's been guiding out of here for years, and he talked to some of his captain friends, and they pretty much all agree we would be uh, crazy to attempt that, that crossing, uh, only because it's just totally unprotected, and the conditions in the Gulf right now on the, on the size boats that we have, it would just be, uh, it would be a rough, miserable ride. You would have maybe eight miles that you wouldn't have open water, but it cost you 15 miles in traveling yeah, yeah. and winding. Right. And then you still got from there, you know, down to you still got 30 miles of open water. I, the, the the captain that I really lean on a lot, I asked him. I, I ran through everything that I was going to tell y'all to make sure that I'm giving you good info. And when I said uh, that y'all got y'all got it sort of handed to you from the dome houses on to Port of the Island, and his comment was, "I didn't like that. They ain't gonna like tomorrow." That's what. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> to really do, I, I think to do the show right and to be able to show people how much fun you can have out here if you catch a good weather window and the fishing and the, especially in the Keys, um, I think we need the weather. Yep, I agree. It's not really what the show's about. We want to show you guys things that you can do with your boats, places that you can visit, you know, sites that you're going to see, fish you can catch. And in those conditions, we're really not going to show you much because we can't even take the camera gear out. So anyway, I think this is the best um, you know, decision we can make. We're obviously, we're all disappointed that we had to cut the, the trip in half like this. Um, but it's not over. We're going to come back. We're going to finish it, and whether it's in two days, two weeks, you know, really Mother Nature's in control of what we're going to do from here on out. But as soon as we get our weather window, the boats are coming back down here to Port of the Islands. We're going to finish our loop, end up back at Port St. Lucie, just like we promised. And we're going to show you the sights, you know, through the, the back side of the Everglades, through the Keys, up the east coast of Florida, and see, you know, what we can catch there. So, anyway, hopefully stay tuned with us uh, on our um, webpage, eastwardboats.com, uh, or on Facebook, under our Facebook page, eastwardboats slash Facebook. 
and you can see the, the trip we've already done, you can see our route we've already taken, and you can see the route that we're going to continue to take in part two of this series. But hopefully you stay tuned and, um, and you have just as much fun watching as we had fun making it. Heather and Chris, they rescued us. Anytime. <laughs> they drove from Port St. Lucie all the way down to Port of the Islands in the Everglades Anytime. to rescue us from the two to four foot seas with the occasional five. There's so payback though, there's payback, I'm sure it is. Oh, there's definitely there's plenty of payback. <laughs> no problem.